Okay, so I listen. All right, I listen to you guys. So what that means is we're gonna be in Blender today. And of course, if you click on this video to learn some three logos and text and or whatever, which one, this is the right video. And if you also just wanna learn Blender in general, this is also the right video. So hopefully by the end of this video that you can enjoy some really cool 3D assets in your next project because it's really, really simple. And honestly just adds a lot if you guys are not, you know, a, you know, usual, if you're not about it until now. Let's go. One thing I want to say is do not forget to check out the everything pack. If you guys do not know what it is, all 28 of my custom made products that you get on that one purchase plus all future products free. But if you've been thinking about it, you've been eyeballing it, trust me, you pull the trigger and I promise you, you're going to love every second of it. So whether if you guys are new to Blender or not, no matter what, when you guys do a general new object or document, you basically will see a cube, a light and a camera. And right now I'm going to basically just really quickly highlight the cube and light and right click delete hierarchy because we don't need those two things right now. What we're going to do, though, is right. We're going to go to where it says file. We're going to go to where it says import and we're going to import an SVG, right? So if you guys are like me for the record and you have a bunch of folders, if you guys were to click on the top right here and just click on uncheck folders, there you go. Now you can just really quickly go into what you need. So I'm going to click on my SVG and load in my Sesso HQ logo for this example here. Now, the first thing you're probably going to notice is when you select on your object, let's say you go on the top left over here and make sure you click on the move tool. Uh, you can see that it's not actually lined up and it's really hard to rotate and move it when it's not lined up to so quickly line it up. We're going to right click somewhere on the logo, click on set origin and then click on origin to geometry. And then just like so it should if it doesn't <laughs> Google, but if it, it should, okay, put it right back in the middle. Now, if I go and just rotate this for myself, just like so, and I'm gonna have myself a nice little extrude here in a second. So in Blender, the third to last right here, this spline slash curve uh, property settings is where you can actually go under geometry and then mess around with your extrude. So I can just kind of click on it just like so, and then drag it to extrude my logo as much as I possibly want. If you're usual to Illustrator and all that good stuff for Cinema 4D, it's the, it's the same exact thing. It's just extruding the logo. This is pretty much the basis of making it 3D. Now, if you guys want to also add a bevel, you can also just do a little drop down on bevel here, go on round and your depth. I would change it from anywhere from 0 0.01, not 0 0.1, 0 0.01 to 0 0.02. Maybe that's like your maximum. I'm gonna go 0 0.01 personally. And then you guys can see it'll add a nice simple little bevel also don't mind my my svg has a little bit of a mess up here but you can see the curves itself are nice and sharp it looks really good in my opinion of course you can increase your resolution to like 50 or so if you want it to be a little bit more smoother or you can go even like negative or, or down i would go to like one and then you can see it's super super sharp and it just leaves for like a very sharp cool look as well so it doesn't really matter where you kind of go with it but it's always up to you now in this sense though a lot of you guys enjoyed like the really really smooth look that we got out of the actual clothes and that's with a different technique i did that technique so that the actual world the little chrome effect that i put on kind of spreads it a little bit easier and also it just makes it look cool in my opinion so let me show you guys how to do that too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to control C, control V, this curve here. So we have two different ones. You guys see the, the, the very obvious difference, okay? So on this one right here, I'm going to the, take the bevel off as well. I'm going to put this back at zero depth. Nope, not that one. I want this one. So I'm back at zero depth. What I'm going to go and do immediately after I do my extrude at least, I'm going to go to where it says object and I'm going to go to where it says convert and then where it says mesh, right? So this will basically make this nice little mesh and this will give me the ability to go to where it says my atom modifier properties. This is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to last uh, little tool here. We're going to click on it. We're going to click on add modifier. And we're going to click on where it says remesh, right? So this remesh, we're going to go on smooth. We're going to take our d depth here and put it at about nine or so. And then we're going to just basically uncheck, remove, disconnected, just like so. Now, if you go anywhere above nine, good luck. And I'm sorry, you're, you're, it's definitely going to crash, just saying. But if I were to really quickly zoom in, you can see that it is remeshing. However, our corners are not as smooth as that we want to. But this will set us up for this next atom modifier. For the record, you, this will not apply unless you do this little drop down here and press apply. So don't forget to make sure you apply it. And I'm going to add another modifier. We're going to do smooth corrective. And for this one, we just put our factor to one. We just click on it, press one. We can take our repeat 100. Again, it might lag just a little bit just a little bit, but then it'll be fine after. See, now I'm good, 100 repeat, and then I'm gonna click on the word smooth, uh, or only smooth, excuse me, click on that little toolbox there, and what you'll notice really quickly is that really nice, just smoothness is there now. 
and it looks really, it's like a, like a puffy cloud. I don't know, I really like it. Again, like I said before, since it is remeshed, it'll actually just kind of really help the chrome effect work really, really well too. So let's go ahead and just actually make the, uh, the, the material for this really quick. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna click over here where it says the materials tabs. And I, I would even go ahead and just say, I'm gonna make this timeline a little bit bigger. And then this little button right here, this is basically the timeline uh, viewport. I'm gonna change this to where it says shader editor. And I'm gonna use this as my shader editor so I can leave the viewport up here still uh, visible. So right here, I'm gonna click on my material here. I'm gonna click on material. I'm gonna click on new material and I'm gonna type in, I'm gonna just say Seso HQ matte. Why not, right? Boom. And then for this material here, I'm gonna click zoom in really, really heavily and I'm gonna take the metallic and put this all the way up to one. And I'm gonna take my roughness and put this all the way to 0 0.01 or 0 0.1, excuse me, just like so. And that'll really quickly make it like that chrome effect that you guys saw my like uh, my clove video, but I'll make sure you guys get the chromatic like color as well in there. But just this is kind of how you do it. So you can definitely kind of see now that it is nice and chrome. I'm also gonna put it on this one too, because why not? I can do that really quickly by just clicking on the curve itself, clicking on the material just like so, clicking over here, and then clicking on my CISO mat, and I'll apply it to this one over here as well. But you can kind of see how immediately like the left one, the way that we remesh it, just the color just feels and works a lot better, even though I don't have an HDRI here and just looks better. But now that we got our material all good and set and done, we can also just make it darker if we want to with this over here, but I'm gonna actually add in that world kind of material to actually help us out here. So over on here, the left side says objective. I'm gonna click on that and click on world. And we're gonna go ahead and add some good little nodes into this. Now, if I think, do you need no Wrangler for this? I'm not sure if you do, but if you go to where it says edit preferences, uh, add-ons and click on the search bar and do like type in node and then enable node wrangler I don't know if that's what this is like again I'm not like a blender expert and I don't know when I set this but I know this is one day I did set this regardless one day if you do continue using blender you're gonna need this anyway just go ahead and activate that for yourself either way once you guys are good we're gonna click on this somewhere on the blank canvas do shift a to add in and also gonna use a search feature so I'm gonna search in environment texture just like so i'm going to just click over here drag this color into the color we're going to add another thing called mapping so i'm going to do search mapping just like so map here map here vector goes to the vector and then last but not least we're going to go ahead and do search and then texture coordinate just like so and then this will generate into the vector just like so and now what we can do is we can go to unsplash.com not a sponsor by the way but it's just one of the best places that, it sounds like a sponsor but it's one of the best places to get your own images for like you know for the free ski so i'll go ahead and go to unsplash i'm going to type in abstract uh abstract background just like so oops right and for this i can just kind of scroll down until i see something really cool in my opinion this is pretty dope i'm not gonna scroll any further i would just download this at the highest quality setting just like this and then also if you guys want to maybe there's like something else this could be fire too. I'm gonna download this one. Why not? Anyway, once you got them all downloaded, I'm gonna press open over here. Go ahead and find where I ended up downloading it. Just like so. I'm gonna use that the last one I found because I thought that was pretty sick. And if you guys can't see it, it's because you're in this certain view mode right here. We're gonna go to where it says the view, like the actual like final render view view mode. This little last one right here, just like this. And now, oh, oh that is sick. This is a really cool environment. So yeah, this is super cool. Now, there's a few things before you even start to render this thing out that I would love to show you guys really quick. And so the first thing, right, is under our render engine here, we're gonna change this from EV to Cycles. If you guys have a good enough GPU, let's say if you can play Valorant at like at least 120 frames, you're good. So I would use cycles and under device, I would end up not just using CPU, but I would also use GPU commute or compute, excuse me. And then for this, if you guys go to where it says, uh, again, edit preferences, I believe it's under system and make sure we are on our optic X and you have your actual GPU and your CPU checked. That way, this just will render a lot faster for you guys. Um, and if you know you have a good GPU, I would also suggest you guys, okay, under where it says performance, I will also uncheck use tiling. So what tiling does if when you render it out, you'll notice that you render out in like these little squares if you have like a lot of 3D objects going on in the same scene. And if you don't want that to happen, it'll just render the entire square for you in like one shot. So it's just like a lot faster. And uh, yeah, I would just definitely check that if you guys are good enough on the GPU side. But also besides that, I wouldn't want the background also showing in this environment. So what I'm also gonna do is under film, uh, I'm gonna go to where it says transparent and have that checked as well. And that'll get rid of the little image we have in the background. And now we're just gonna look at it just, I mean, that's kind of sick. Either way, you're not fully done because you wanna press shift A somewhere on the canvas to add in your lights. Now I'm gonna personally, I just add a little area light and put this right above everything just like so. Uh, pretty, not too far ahead, but just like this. I'm gonna press S 
on my keyboard, this will mess with the scale. I'm going to make sure this is a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to just add the light properties. So I'm going to click on the light, go to our light properties, which is the second to last uh, little settings here. And I'm going to just change this about 160 or so. And then I'm just going to see how this kind of looks. I can already feel that some of you guys are going to like the right hand side too, but it's okay. But before we even render though, we're going to need a camera. So the way we're going to do this is shift A once again. We're going to go to where it says uh, camera, just like so. Now, I don't have a numpad. I have a 60% keyboard. So if you have a numpad, you can just press control O to set your canvas. So I can you can kind of like zoom in and press control O. I have to press control alt O to set like my uh, my view render for the camera. But if you guys don't have a 60% keyboard or you do have a 60% keyboard, go to uh, edit preferences once again, go to input and then make sure you select emulate numpad. This will give you the option to, of course, do the shortcuts for like setting cameras, all that good stuff. So for me, uh, for numpad people control O for me, control alt O will set this camera and I can just go to the camera settings as well and also move it around just a little bit. So I can click into the camera, click on my camera settings that are right here. Focal length, I can change this around just a little bit and I can also probably suggest you guys to do this as well, but under my render settings or not render settings, your output settings i would change my resolution here from like 30 what is it 38 40 by 2160 or you can just do whatever you want but i would just make sure you kind of render in a 4k document if you're if you're working in a higher document of course i'd probably make this a little bit higher either way once you kind of have this set you can always get out of this by the way and your settings for your uh, the way you set the camera will always stay still if you like move around and whatnot you can press control zero if you're just on the 60 percent keyboard to go back into it not control alt zero press control zero just kind of go back into the viewport or select the camera itself and then click this right here and it'll kind of bring you in and out just like that. But now that you have this all centered, all good to go, this is where you can now, of course, go to where it says render, render your image, and then right there, you'll just render your image in the same exact viewport and it's just super simple and super easy and just, that's it. Oh my God, I just realized, I'm also rendering with 4,000 samples, probably not necessary for this. I would probably say anywhere between like 1,500 and 2,000 is good enough. So if you guys go to your render settings, under render itself, right? The max samples, I'd probably put this at like 15, 1800. Even that's like a little overkill, but I'm like real, I'm into the crispness. Check denoise if it's not checked already. And then and that way it's only gonna take like five minutes to render maximum. Uh, and you're good to go. I would also recommend if you guys have yet to ever watch my uh, first ever Blender tutorial, I would definitely do that. I'll link it right here in the top over here just go ahead and click over there and i'll go ahead and link it for you guys it'll, it'll show you guys how to navigate a little bit more further than i did in this video because i went through a basic tutorial already in the past but this is this is pretty much all you have to do when it comes to rendering some 3d images uh again 3d logos 3d text 3d whatever as long as an svg you're good to go you know what i mean so you can definitely get creative with it have a little bit of fun and just create some cool stuff because i think it's as soon as you know how to do it, you never want to not do it. And if you guys were wondering what happens when your render is done, how do you actually save it? You have to go to where it says image, save this as, I would make sure RGBA is of course selected if this is a uh, transparent thing that you're of course rendering. Just come down here, name it SSOHQ 3D logos, right? And then press save image and you guys are good. And if you also were ever wondering why in our worlds table, we added all these mappings and things like that. The mapping, if you go to scale and if we kind of move this around, this will actually move around the actual image in the environment. So if you guys, of course, want to get more different colors or like a, a variety of them or move it around a little bit, that's where you want to do it under your scale or rotation, however you guys wish to do it. I, I think maybe rotation is probably better, huh? Either way, you got, you get the point. But if you did also want to make it a little more brighter or not bright, I would just go like 0.5 or one. It just depends on you, you know? I'm trying to give you as much information as possible before I say, say some HQ out. Now we're going to keep smiling and stay positive and stay freaking proud of guys that are much love peace and uh, hopefully this helped if this helped let me know if it didn't help i'm never doing it again that's fine so what i'll just say is don't run it for anybody else and just say it helped and we just we, we go we just you know